okay? Just to let you know, if you're not here in the beginning of this section, the domain is the set of all the x values. So, when you're writing the domain, you must identify the minimum and the maximum of all of the x values. The range is the set of all the y values. Again, you must identify the minimum and the maximum. Okay? Now, in term 1, we did interval notation, set builder notation. Those two notations are required when you are writing domain and range. And we also did inequalities. That was in term 1. So, those concepts are required when you are, when you are writing down the domain and range of a function. The domain is the set of all the x values. The range is the set of all the y values. Okay? Right. I'm going to give you an example. If you are given a function, remember, it's f of x equal to a over x plus q. Let's say the a is positive. Okay? And the Q is positive. Okay? I'm going to use that case as my example. You need to apply to all the other what? To the other five cases. Remember, we've got five cases in terms of, so six cases in terms of the shape of how the hyperbola will look like. So I'm choosing one case. Okay? Next. A bigger than zero and Q bigger than zero. That's case two. Okay? So in brackets, let's write here case two. I'm using case two to explain how to determine the domain and the range. Because this part here, it confuses learners, but it is taught from great text. Some learners will never get it how to write the domain and range until they finish machine. Okay? So, I'm going to try and make it as simple to you as possible. So, let's, this is the case. So, let's draw the graph. Okay. Let's see. So, how it looks like. We know how it looks like. Okay? You know how it looks like. Right? If, if, if Q is positive and A is, is positive, the first thing we draw our horizontal asymptote, this means our Q, maybe you can say it's somewhere there. That's where Q is. So if I draw the asymptote, remember I told them before you draw the two curves, you must start with the asymptote. Okay, so your equation of this straight line is y equal to q. Right? Since a is positive, my two curves, okay, one will be in the first part length, the other one is going to be in the third part length. You must not touch the y axis. So it will look like this. Alright? Now, I want you to make sure you pay attention carefully. The, the domain. So let's start with the domain. Uh, my space is x. Okay. Let me write the domain here. The domain. Okay. When you have a hyperbolic graph in grade 10, okay, like this one here, you want to talk about the domain, right? Since the y axis is an asymptote, which means x can never be zero. Okay? Since the y-axis 
is an asymptote. It means x can never be zero. Okay? I'm sure you can agree with me. If I put x equal to zero, where is the x there? Will you be able to get an, an answer for y? Your calculator would say what? Undefined. If you substitute x equal to zero here, let's say you know a value of, of a, a value of q. Like example, if I do that y equal to say minus three over x plus one. If I say determine the value of y or the y intercept, okay, you won't find it because if you put x equal to zero here. Minus 3 over 0 is 1. What is minus 3 over 0? It's undefined. You've got your calculator. Can you put it in your calculator? Minus 3 over, over 0 is what? Undefined. Which means there is no value for what? For what? So your y-axis is an asymptote. Therefore, x can never be 0. So when you write your when you, you write down your domain, it means you have to exclude x equal to what? Because x will never be seen. Okay? So when you write the domain, you can write like this. Y, sorry, x, rather, it will be x is an element of real numbers. Which means x can be any real number. We did the number system in, in term one. Okay, so x can be any number, but we have to put a restriction. But x is not equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to teach you that notation for the domain. I don't want to talk about the other one because it has got the union notation. I don't want to confuse anyone here. Okay? So, when you are asked to write down the domain in this frame, okay, your domain will always be x is an element of real numbers, but x is not equal to zero. Remember, when we say x is an element of real numbers, we are talking about so minus infinity to positive infinity. Okay? X can be any value. But it cannot be zero because the y axis is an asymptote. Alright? Then the range. So let me use blue. Blue is a nice color. The range. The range, yes? Yeah, it's a straight line that approaches the graph, but it will never what touch the graph, or rather, the graph will never touch that line. Okay, so the graph and and the asymptote don't come into contact. Okay, but the graph can get as close as possible to the asymptote. So here. The value of, of x can be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, whichever the case, but it can never be 0 itself. Okay? Alright, so that's our domain, then the range. Right? Now the range is the set of all the y values. The range is the set of all the y values. Okay? Now, when you have got a graph like the one that, that I drew here, okay? The two curves will never touch the horizontal asymptote. The two curves will never touch the horizontal asymptote. Which means, when you write our domain, sorry, our range, okay? Y cannot be equal to Q. Y cannot be equal to Q because Q is along the what? The horizontal asymptote. 
Okay? So Q can take on any value from minus infinity up to positive infinity, but Y can never be equal to Q. Because, because our equation of our asymptote is Y equal to Q. So these two curves will never touch the horizontal asymptote. So when you write your range, it will be Y is an element of real numbers but y is not equal to q. Yes. So all, all you have to do is go to the equation like this. The q is 1. So you can ask to write the range. You write y is an element of real numbers, but y is not equal to 1. Because at y equal 1, at y equal 1 is an asymptote. So the y values can never include 1. For this example, talking about this example. But we know that generally this one, it's, we call it q from the general equation. That's why I'm writing what q here because the q can be positive, can be negative. Okay, I've done the refraction, it can be. A positive integer and the negative integer. So, this Q here, okay, it changes. It can be positive, it can be what? Negative. So, that's why I'm generalizing here. Yeah. So, you just locate this Q from the what? Whatever equation you have. Don't worry, I'll show you just now. Okay? And, and the beauty about this is this range here, it doesn't change until metric. So if you understand it now, all the way up to metric, you are okay. But the one which is going to change is the, is the domain because of horizontal shift. This thing sounds scary, sir. <laughs> no, stop being negative. Stop being negative. Okay? Stop being negative. All right. Does anybody ask for any question before we move on to sketching? Mm -hmm.